Hi, this is John Hope Ryan, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope, America's largest financial literacy and economic inclusion organization in the country. Uh, and welcome to the Hope Global Forum Annual Meeting 2021. It really is a time for change. Uh, it really does require this moment, leaders who are ready to meet the moment. One could suggest with this interview that to quote Ambassador Andrew Young, coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. Um, Kelly is a CEO literally made for this moment. Um, she, you'll get the sense from her in a moment yourself of her number one quality, which is authenticity. Um, I met her and a group of people, but instantly felt uh, that she was the real deal. I felt that we had a personal rapport without much conversation because she communicates that sense of confidence and to be blunt, no games. Um, she, from a professional perspective, has outperformed. She was at J.P. Morgan Chase for 20 years, even though she looks 25. Uh, she, I believe, was in Buenos Aires. She'll correct me. I think Argentina or someplace, someplace in Latin America serving in different leadership roles. Uh, she served in a range of roles at J.P. Morgan Chase, including running the private bank. Um, and given that one of the largest institutions in the world and the private bank is a source of great revenue and prestige and protection. Um, you don't put somebody there who's a lightweight. Um, and I, I know Jamie Diamond and that crew over there and they don't play. Um, and coming from a, a, a background in international affairs and French, which is what she majored in in college. And I think it was something having to do with uh, being a diplomat, if I'm not mistaken, she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but to, to pivot from that to finance. Um, I mean, first of all, back then, women weren't uh, welcome to be blunt in either one of those spaces, um, international affairs. Uh, well, three spaces, diplomacy, um, unless you were a secretary uh, and I'm in secretary of state either uh, in finance. So she, like many people that I represent, had to gently kick the door in. Um, that's not that something she's saying. That's something that I'm presuming because uh, I know what the road looks like. Um, she's done it with class. She's done it with, with style and substance without giving up her soul. Um, probably, and she's on the board of the Economic Club of New York and all sort of the right places, but she also gives back. Um, she's engaged in philanthropy. She chairs community boards. Um, the, the, the award, though, that I'm most interested in is the L.A. Business Journal, and she's won the 25 top women in finance, I think it is, or in banking from American Banker, and she's been on that list of most influential successive years. Um, but the Los Angeles Business Journal in 2021, this year, acknowledged her as the diversity and inclusion and something else CEO of the year. In the backdrop of 2020, that's saying a lot. Um, and so I want to get into this conversation with her. And I want you to know the person that I met and have gotten to know and have a sense for why you should have hope at this time, because you wouldn't think a bank that is 90 billion or so in assets, it really is known for its uh, uh, expertise in the, in the entertainment industry, per se, would have a lot to say about inclusion around the, the least of these God's children around the so-called poor. They do have a lot to say. Uh, I'm gonna let her get into it. Uh, I will say before I formally sort of turn the baton over, we are sitting in a moment in history, but history does not feel historic when you're sitting in it. It just feels like another day. But that does not mean that the moment is not in fact historic. The fact that there is a woman who's CEO of one of the largest banks in the largest economy in the world <laughs> is a sense that we are pivoting in the right direction. And the fact that this woman is not hiding the fact that she cares for those 
uh, who are less fortunate suggest that there are leaders with a soul. So let's get into soul finding and soul exploring. Uh, please uh, join me in welcoming my, my new friend, Kelly Coffey. So Kelly, why, why don't you talk to me, talk to us about this strange story of yours, this strange trajectory of, if I got it right, French, <laughs> diplomacy and banking. Well, first of all, John, thank you for having me. And uh, I'm I'm so excited about all that you're doing. I, I, I really, truly have enjoyed getting to know you and and all the work you're doing has really added to my thinking on it. So I want a big thank you. And sorry, I can't be in person with you. Um, so start with my story. I call myself the accidental banker for sure, uh, because I did study at Georgetown uh, School of Foreign Service. But I have to say that diplomacy has come in handy for me in my career in many, many ways. Um, and, and, you know, I, I joined JP Morgan right out of, right after Georgetown and, and I didn't intend to stay as long as I did, but I, I kept finding new challenges and I thought it was so exciting. And I liked the people I was working with. And, and in some ways I've kind of come full circle because, you know, as a child, um, you know, when I was very young, my father, who was a surgeon, um, signed up to serve our country in Vietnam. And because of that, I lived with my grandparents for an extended period of time. Much of which was spent with my grandfather. I was very, very close with him. And he ran a bank and he ran a community bank where he spent most of his time. And I used to go to work with him and drove everybody crazy at the bank many times, worked there summers. And, and I think it was that passion I saw for helping people through a community bank that it was probably in, in, in the back of my mind as I was studying lots of things I was interested in. And it's probably why I ended up where I am today in many, many ways. Where was that bank located? In a small town in Pennsylvania called Old Forge, Pennsylvania, in the northeast of the state. So for those who are watching um, and you've heard me say, if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10. The opposite is also true. We model what we see. And um, I now understand something else about Kelly, which is where her some of her compassion comes from and empathy, because she knows that she got the luck of the gene pool and she got lucky in several ways and was able to role model a father. Uh, and now we have, we might have this conversation. Pre, I didn't know any of this background, but she used to start nodding her head. She affirms. Yeah, I, I really did have a head start. Like, you know, when you're sitting at the kitchen table or, and you're listening to dad talk about money or banking or deals, uh, you're three, five, seven, that affects you. Uh, and you start believing, well, I can do that too. And having a great deal of confidence. Is that right, Kelly? That's absolutely right. I, I think, I mean, I was incredibly lucky with where I start with my family and how I brought up. I, I saw that. I've seen that in so many different settings, John. You've seen it too. I mean, I just think back. One of the boards I served on for so many years um, is was a charter school in New York City, KIPP NYC, and yeah. um, and I saw the power of working with with many children who had never been out of the Bronx um, and taking them to see a college for the first time and understanding where they could go in life and seeing that they can do it and see, you know, yeah, the help you get and what you, what you internalize as a young person is really important. It really does give you an advantage. I'm not going to say it's determinant because there's a lot of people who, who succeed despite that, but you've got to recognize it's a, it's a, to be able to see what you're trying to achieve is a very powerful motivator. And in my neighborhood, in, in, in Compton, California, and not far from you, South Central LA, growing up, the role model we saw, un unfortunately, too often was the limits of rapping, because not everybody can be that, the limits of basketball, professional sports, because not everybody can do that, or the, the unfortunate role of, let's say, being a drug dealer, because, well, you don't want to do that. But those were the symbols of success in my neighborhood. And I think somehow you get, and maybe you can tell me or help me understand why, I think it does speak to this moment and why you got this award from LABJ. Somehow you get that, yes, you got to be smart and talented and all that stuff, work hard, but somehow you get 
let you model what you see and we got to give somebody, somebody something different to see. Um, mm -hmm. Where'd that come from? I think it came from so many different things that I that I saw, whether it was growing up, but also just in in uh, in my work since then. I, I think, you know, a lot of the work that that I get to do, I've done personally in education, but that we're doing as a bank, for example, in many of our communities, it it, it shows you how powerful that can be. I'll give you a great example. Um, you know, one of the things that City National did. Uh, was to give over a million dollars a year to teach financial literacy in LA public schools. We partnered with EverFi, trained more than 100, I met more than 15,000 students in financial literacy, and we continue to do it. We, we also opened a, a, a branch in the Crenshaw District, which is an underserved oh, area, but had a lot of entrepreneurs. And, and we've done coding classes and, and sponsored a number of different things. And when you see people coming together and 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 I think there's we're at an exciting time. You say we are at a historic moment. I love how you say it just feels like another day. But how you can use technology to make that go even broader is incredibly powerful. So I I I, I see that I've seen I've seen examples and evidence of it every single day. And when I look at the entrepreneurs we serve and where they started and how they built their businesses, it's it's really exciting to, to see that. And you see where they need their help and you, you focus and our you know, I, I'm, I'm surrounded by a lot of colleagues that love to do that. I have been through my through my career. Uh, JP Morgan has done a lot, too. So I think I think I've learned it through all of that work that I've done over the years. Yeah, and we met indirectly, indirectly through a personal relationship. Most of life is relationship capital. I want to commend, by the way, I want to get really deep into some serious stuff here in a second. I want to pivot, but I want to commend um, in no particular order, um, Aaron Cohen. Um, Sal Mendoza, Karen Clark, um, these are, are people on your team who represent you well, I believe, including in the community, particularly Karen and, and Sal. Um, help me understand how you view uh, 2020. Uh, from where I sit, and, and again, we haven't talked about this, uh, you had a, the largest health pandemic since the, great, the, the, since the Spanish flu. You, which we're still managing through. You've had a 400-year-old social justice reckoning on Black America, which makes some people uncomfortable to say, but I, to me, it's just history. You, you've had the greatest unemployment since the Great Depression, where actually at the same time, folks who are invest, in the investor class actually did better, by the way, myself included. So it's the, the color actually today is not Black or white or red or blue. It's 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 green. Um, and those who get the memo on financial literacy have done better. Um, a lot of books, struggling people have not. Then you have a crisis of our democracy. January 6th, where Americans were attacking Americans. The Capitol has not been attacked since 1812. And that was the British. So I, when I say we're sitting in this moment in history, I really do mean that I think 2020, you can't make that up. Um, and what we do in the next few years just might have an impact for the next 50 or 100 years. What do you, how do you react to what I said there? And, and if you agree on any level, what have you done about it? Oh, wow. It's been a, t it's 2020 was a tough year. Um, and you point to a lot of the really big, significant issues that are going to take us years to address, but they, that somehow came to the, became more um, understood maybe through this year that we were going through. I, I think it just, it just focused people more on it. I think this crisis was one, you know, I've been through a number of crises in my career. Um, I've been right. doing this for 30 plus years. Um, this was different because this was a personal health crisis. I had never been through anything like that before. And so and I think one of the things that was so hard about it, John, was that people were all experiencing it differently, depending on what your family situation was and and what your health situation was. And it was also personal. So, you know, I think I think this year I'm I'm incredibly uh, proud of of the way my team at City National stepped up for for every for clients, communities, colleagues. You know, our first our first, you know, moving everybody to work from home. 
Um, I don't I don't think I would have thought that we could have worked from home as effectively as we did. So our first, you know, our first because of the way the crisis um, um, unfolded, the first thing to do was think about the health of our colleagues and being able to continue to serve our clients. Right. So um, putting everybody remote, getting everybody home really, really quickly. And and we've worked through that. And then we had just basically gotten that done. And then the government stepped in with the Paycheck Protection Program, which, in my view, was incredibly uh, powerful for uh, the country. And um, but it, it it was changing almost hourly in terms of how it was unfolding. And so when you think about having everybody working from home and being able to execute uh, for clients and round one, I know there were two rounds, um, but we were in the top 10 lenders in the country in round one. And we did that mostly manually. Because wow. Yeah, because think about how it, how stressful that was for business owners. They didn't know if they were going to be able to survive it. And yeah. so we had colleagues working, as many banks did, but 24-7 around. I mean, even our my colleagues in marketing and HR and legal saying, I'll help you figure out. She explained to me how to do this. So I'll make sure I help you get it done. And I it was a really it was a really difficult time, but it was in so many ways a really, when you look back on it, such a such a powerful time in terms of how we came together when none of us were together or very few. We did have obviously essential colleagues. So there were about 15% of the bank that was in, but so that, that was the first, you know, when I think about the first part of what, you know, this, you know, going through that was pretty incredible. Um, and that was one of the ways that I think we really took care of our clients and, and a number of clients that couldn't, couldn't get the answer. Obviously they did round two. Um, and, and so we did over 6 billion around, on both both um, rounds, but you know there were there were a good chunk that couldn't get their bank to pick up the phone and, and answer them, and so we we brought in a number of new clients we were able to help that we knew and and um, and that's that obviously was gratifying to be able to do, um, and then and then I'd say you know the other way we stepped up very quickly was for the community. I mean, you know, you talked to we we did we donated more than thirteen million in the communities we serve, and you know our colleagues were a huge played a huge role on that. It wasn't just money. Um, it was, it was them giving their time, even remotely. Um, you know, we, we more than 20,000 hours that we donated and, and the largest single donation right after this happened, 2 million to support the early, early COVID efforts. And I, what I would say is when you think about some of the organizations that were hit that we, we you know, baby to baby in terms of essential items to children in need, um, US fats were very involved in. And then across entertainment, I mean, entertainment was hit really hard. Broadway, yeah. Shut down production shut down so broadway cares music Frozen. cares fun it, it was it, you know it was we supported uh we we were able and i was happy that we could step up and support them at a pretty scary time so you know that's and then i think about what went on you know you talk about uh what went on in social justice the murder of george floyd you know th there was a whole world that was new to me honestly of mm. speaking out on some of these issues that as a as a CEO, I didn't necessarily always do historically. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm only two and a half years into this role. So it's not like I've been here. Uh, I was only here about a year before the pandemic hit. And so um, that was also something that leaders had to had to think about. And I think my our clients and our colleagues, they, I think they wanted to hear about me when something happened that I that that was so terrible. I felt yeah. the need to speak out on it. And that's why we, you know, so we have a lot going on on the diverse side, which I'm sure you and I will get into, including joining with your 1 million Black Business Coalition, which I'm um, very, very excited about. We really are excited about your goal because I agree with you. The, the, it's green. It's about if you if you need to be able to, uh, to be able to make and manage money, to be able to control your destiny and to uh, continue to grow. So we're, we're excited to not only participate, but also serve as business mentors. Because what I like about that is there's money and then there's time and we actually are experts in it. So let's actually use our expertise to help the community, which is, which I think aligns really well. Well, and in some ways the bank will be doing at scale, what you got in your household, which is role modeling, mentoring, yeah. encouraging, guiding, um, creating that comfort zone of, we're in this to win it um, in a clear definition of what the goal is with support. Um, and we can't create that in families and the households. We at least create an ecosystem for that in the community. A lot to no pun intended for city national bank, a laddering effect is That's what right. 
one MBB is about. We'll pivot to that uh, in, in a moment. I want to go back to something you said, then I want to make a, a, have a personal question for you. So you, you sort of walked right past, because as you were talking about this, I'm thinking, okay, you've had a, you've had a, a crisis of just a small business that you bank, restaurants, whatever, out of cash. You had to make some decisions there. Yep. Then you got a crisis in a, a healthcare crisis, uh, which affect my population uh, 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 unfairly or un, uh, unevenly, uh, more so than others. Um, there's a whole backstory about why that's the case, but we won't get into that a mo- uh, at the moment. But there's a reason why Blacks have uh, in, uh, pre-existing conditions. That's not our fault. It goes back to slavery, et cetera, and the diet that was adopted. Uh, you, so you focus there and you think you said 17 million in 2020, you guys invested there. So you're trying to plug the hole in the small businesses, trying to offset some of the pain in the philanthropic and nonprofit sector. You've got your primary business, which normally is as stable as a rock, which is entertainment, uh, et cetera, that's hemorrhaging money and doesn't know what the future looks like because your primary business, their primary business is touching people or being involved with people and they can't do any of that for the foreseeable future. And it must've been a really scary time as CEO. Let me back up. Then you said one other thing, which I think you said you were one of the top 10 lenders for PPP and Opera Hope had a small role in designing the program that the part of PPP to help the really small businesses. So we actually were accidentally partners when you did the first round, did we say you were the top 10 lenders, one top 10 banks? In the first, yeah, in the first round. Then, because I think a lot of the other banks were trying to build technology platforms too. And so they, we just couldn't have our clients wait. So we just jumped in and did it manually. In, and then in round two, the larger banks, obviously, we didn't end up top 10. But the second round, we also built a technology platform on Salesforce, which is fantastic. It made it so much easier. But I, I we didn't, you know, I think we started with our values. Like we are a very client focused organization. And when a client's calling and every client who, who banks the city national has a person to call, which is different for us. We're not a big, broad retail bank. So it's a little different. Right. And so when you have a client calling with that fear, you can't just sit and say, well, get, let, let us get our process straight. Like you really have to get in there. And so we, we, uh, we rallied the troops really, really quickly and, and literally 24 seven. Um, so if there's somebody watching this right now, a, a woman owned business, black owned business, Latino owned business, Asian owned business, whatever. And they're where you are and they want to bank with you guys. Somebody's going to answer their phone call. Yeah. Someone's going to answer their phone call. In fact, in fact, I'm, I'm excited because we're working with the um, one of our regulators, um, uh, the OCC on our main regulator on project reach, which is about, uh, reaching more, right? So that that is, and I'm excited about some of the work they're doing around um, underserved communities, business so business owners. We are our history is a business bank. Um, we do both. We do we're a commercial bank and and private bank. But but I think that we get business owners, we get complex credit, and and so I think that 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 overlaps with our expertise. So we're going to do all we can to help there. I'm I'm a, I'm a work stream uh, leader for Project Reach once again. Uh, uh, coincidence right. is God's way of staying anonymous. So for those watching, just for context, there are five, 6,000 banks in America. Uh, so when she says she's one of the top 10 in that first round, that was a big deal for a bank of $90 billion worth of assets, which is large, but not in the context of, uh, right. of the money to their banks. So now let me pivot. I don't want to run out of time if we get to the to get into the details of what you guys did in the pandemic and what you plan and what your vision is for the future. Um, but as a woman, you walk in a room and I, I've noticed you don't hide yourself like you don't you don't you don't put yourself under a bushel. You don't act like you're not a woman. You, you're you, you're reasonably, it appears, comfortable in your own skin, which which I'm sure you've been been uh, discriminated against him. And folks have sort of tried to dismiss or or, or diminish you. How do you handle that as an somebody's watching this? There's a woman watching this or a group of women. Uh, and they're trying to figure out how do you how do you survive? How do you thrive? How do you build in a man's world? What's perceived to be a man's world? What, what advice do you have for them based on your own journey? Yeah, people will say I'm pretty hard headed and stubborn. And I just kind of I just kind of uh, 
move through it. I, I don't I don't think I mind being underestimated. I think you can use that to your advantage. I think sometimes I have been underestimated. Um, and, you know, and, and particularly with a certain type of person who can't believe your work at a bank, let alone run a bank. Um, sure. And uh, and I just you just have to get over that. But my advice to women in particular, um, and I'm making this obviously on my experience and then just some uh, observations I've had with women is that, you know, and I and I, this advice is not only for women out there, but I would also say for all the men who have women working for them, you know, to the women, I would say you have to have confidence in yourself. Mm. Know your stuff. You know, there's lots of, you know, just sweat the details, make sure, you know, but you have to have confidence in yourself. And and I think that sometimes I have observed women working for me where I step in to give them a promotion or or ask them to run a bigger business, something nine times out of 10, they're going to say, oh, I'm not quite sure I'm ready. I'm not quite sure I have, you know, I have nine of the 10, but I don't have the 10th or I don't have this. And I have to say, I, I wouldn't have picked you if I didn't think you were going to do a good job. So I'm going to help you get there and don't worry about it. And so for the men out there that women working for them, don't misinterpret that, that they're not capable, but they just might need a little push to have that to really have that belief in themselves for a number of different reasons that is probably too many to go into now. And then I would say, and I, I would say, you know, most wet men who walk into my office probably think they can do my job better than I can. Right. But it's a very, I, you know, and I know I'm generalizing, but it's a difference. I, I see a difference and it repeats itself over and over again. So I think it's just making sure do what you need to do to have the confidence to know that you can do it. And what you don't know, you'll figure it out. There's a lot of people. I mean, who is it? There's a great Ted talk, fake it till you make it. And all these stances. It's true. You know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know hundred percent, but you're going to learn some of it on the job. That's, a, that's what it's like. And so that's my biggest advice to, uh, to women out there. And then I just think ask for help, which is not that easy when you're, you know, depending on who, who you are, but a lot of women, um, myself included, it's not really my, wasn't really my inclination to ask for help. I was used to, I got this under control. I can do it all. And, uh, and I think you've got to get yourself uh, very used to asking for help. Yeah. It's not a weakness. Well, what I would say is in summarizing what you just said, don't let the perfect become the death of the good. That's right. Um, That's just right. get out there and, and take a swing. Uh, Reggie Jackson speaking at our forum. Uh, Hank Aaron spoke two years ago, got rest of soul. They had more strikeouts than home runs. You can't hit a ball. A ball, you're not swinging it. It's um, great. It's, it's a great point. Yeah. As we pivot to the close here, I really want to let you just go here. Uh, I, I, I'll give you a challenge. We're at this inflection point in the world. Um, the last time we were here at this big of an inflection point, I believe, was in the 1960s. Um, in 1968, Dr. King, I believe it was Malcolm X, Dr. King, and John K JF K Bobby Kennedy were murdered in the same year. It's definitely Dr. King and, and Bobby Kennedy. Uh, we've, we've, had, we've been in these points where the, the nation feels very fragile. Um, and in that time, it was a private sector in the 60s. You may not know, Kelly, that st st stepped up in the South and integrated the lunch counters. It was the private sector, not government, that integrated the so the soda shops and the department stores and the bus stations which were privately held back then. Uh, Coca-Cola here in Atlanta uh, stood up and said, we will honor Dr. King, otherwise we're going to move out of this town. T taking a real stand. You've taken a stand. Uh, I think that's part of why you got this award uh, of, of diversity and inclusion. Where are we at right now? And what can the private sector do through business and free enterprise to be a beacon for what I call social justice through an economic lens. Take this wherever you want to take it. And how does it relate to, of course, what you're doing there at the Bay? Well, wow, it's a big question. It's an important question. I wish I had all the answers, but I, what I do know is that the private sector has a significant role to play. Um, and, and I think, you know, you mentioned the LA Business Journal. I'm, I'm incredibly proud of the recognition, but that's not recognition for me. That's a recognition of the work of our entire bank, all 5,000 plus colleagues that I have. in. Um, it's obviously been a huge priority for me to focus on diversity because I truly believe it's a, if you have a diverse team around you, you will make better decisions and you'll be a stronger business. And that's my job is making sure we have the strongest business that we possibly can. And so to me, that's about building a very diverse leadership group to start with. 
and to make sure you have that across the organization. And so, you know, I've, I've had to hire a lot of people, particularly at the at the top uh, top portion of the, the executive committee, what we call top of the bank. And you know what? 70 percent of my hires have been diverse. And that that I didn't compromise a, an inch on quality. Mm. Uh, I just think about things that way. And and it's about so I've been very focused on getting more diverse, um, diverse hires into the bank. And when I do that at a leadership level, I find that it goes down um, the organization. We've also done a lot of other things like finding we have 10 new partner organizations, 16 new partner universities to better access and diverse talent. Um, and, you know, I think and we've done some interesting mentoring programs, but but I think we at the as the as a private sector have the power to hire and have the power to model as we started our conversation. And I think that's some place that we can make a big difference. We also have have the, the power to speak out more, which I think we're I'm certainly finding my way through that and feeling my way as as where to do that and 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 where not to do that. But I want to continue to to do that. And I think that's a place where the private sector can can work together. I'll, un, ultimately, I don't think we're at that point in our in our country. I hope we get to the point where the private and public sector can be partners in this because it's not it's not going to happen if that doesn't happen. And so, you know, that's where I'm focused. I'm focused on, you know, from a bank perspective, building that diverse team and then taking that to clients and taking that to communities and all the benefits that come with that. But I know I can control who I hire yeah. and I know I can control how I invest in them. And yeah. so that that's where that's where I start. I think we're making a lot of progress. I like to say, uh, I'll leave you with this. I like to say this is this is a, a uh, this is a movement, not a moment. I mean, we certainly are, and it's a moment that matters, but it's a movement, not a moment. It doesn't stop, and it never stops. And so it's been my priority since day one, and it's always going to be a major priority for me and for our leadership team. And I'm going to reach out to anybody I can to get help to do that and anybody I can help to do that, too. I want business leaders watching this as we wrap. I want you to understand that this is not some Pollyanna, goody two-shoes conversation that we just had here. This is hard-nosed business just with a heart. And this is a high performing bank and a high performing CEO. And the most, the most profitable and, and uh, uh, wealth generating companies in this country uh, are companies that are committed to diversity and inclusion. Uh, this is just good, smart business. And I, I think this is a great role model for that. Kelly, bonus question, then we're done. Um, as somebody's watching this, I'm just, for some reason, I'm thinking about the young Kelly, the young John right now. Uh, with a dream, and uh, they take no for vitamins. They they just can't get anybody to answer a phone call. No one respond to your email. I mean, what what? I, at one million black business initiative, I didn't actually know that you guys were doing that. I heard it, I knew you guys were talking about it, but I'm fan, I'm so excited to hear that you guys will be involved with one million black business. So anybody watching this, go to hope one mbb dot org and get involved. If somebody's watching this, they want to be a banker or they, they want to be part of the mentorship program or internship program, or they want to be a customer, they think they're going to be one of your largest future uh, uh, well, businesses. And of course, then one of your largest customers as a bank, but they're small right now. What's the advice? Come and see us. I, we've got brand, you know, reach out to us, whether it's through our online presence, our website, or through our, through our bank, come and talk to us. And for someone who wants to be a banker, you know what? Uh, there's, there's so many, you know, obviously I think I'm at a great bank, but there's so many wonderful banks around the country. It, it's, it's just keep after it. There's a, I would just also say there's a lot of different ways to enter. It doesn't have, you know, you don't have to come right in as a banker. You can come in a number of different ways. And, sure. and once you're in, you can really, uh, if you work hard, you can, you can do a lot of things, move along and do a lot of different things. So that would be my advice on if you want to be a banker anywhere not just at City National. Uh, Kelly Coffey is meeting the moment, and so is the bank under her leadership. Thank you for your time. We're going to let you go back to run your bank, and next time when this is all over, we'll see you in person. Everybody, bless you.